Hey guys, Becky here at Bite to Baker. Welcome back. This week we are working on these butterfly ranunculus flowers. They are so pretty. They're my take on it. I hope you guys really enjoy them. They're quick and easy to make. So let's get right to it. So start by grabbing your carrier wire. This is a 20 gauge. It's not very heavy of a flower. Give it a little hook and then for the first center option we're just going to need some brown flour paste a small amount you roll it into a teardrop shape and through the fat end you put your wire that has some edible glue on it give it a little pinch and then form it and just for size the smallest cutter i'm using is about three quarters of an inch maybe an inch tall so it's not a very big center with your tweezers, go ahead and pinch all around little textures, little spikes all around the center. Try to be not very much like a pattern, but just a little bit randomized and get them a bit thin. And then there you go. For option number two, you'll need some green flower paste. And this one has just one extra step um, but I thought I'd give you guys the option for something a bit more realistic. The green paste, you can either cover it with a very thin layer of brown paste, you can color it with brown food color, or you can do like I'm doing right now and just dust it with some brown food color dust. And once you're happy with the color, you go ahead and with little scissors, you snip little spikes all around it, all the way down. Again, trying not too much to make a pattern and make it just a little bit random and making sure that the little snips are fairly thin so it looks a bit more delicate. Just careful not to snip it all off. And then you just go ahead and arrange them to poke out a little bit. You use your finger to pull them almost a bit open and you're done. This one looks more realistic, but it takes an extra step. So your call on which center you'd like. Now for the little stamens, you could do the store-bought stamens and just tape them with some floral tape around here. But I like doing this step where I go ahead and I use just a tiny little grain size of yellow flower paste and I glue it on the bottom end with some edible glue and then stick that end to the bottom making sure that the top sticks out a bit so that it's not fully pressed against the brown center and I run this all the way around because then I have a large base at the bottom where I can just glue my individual flower petals and I don't have to wire any petals. But I'll show you how to go ahead and wire the petals and how to do it without wiring them. So you have both options, totally your call. To do the two rows, it took about three minutes. So once you get the hang of it, it just goes really fast. It's not as time consuming as it looks. For the petals, I'm using two cutters. The small one is about an inch in height. The large one is about an inch and a quarter. And what I do is in the Ziploc bag, I roll out my paste and then using a paintbrush, I go ahead and move the paste to the sides so that I have a thin, thick center, which is where I'll put the wire through. I go ahead, open it, and then I Cut them out, making sure that that thick center is right in the center of my cutter. And I do this for as many petals as I need. I use about 14 petals for a flower, but you can make it bushier or you can make it more sparse. Totally your choice. If I'm not going to wire the petals, then I just roll all the paste out very thin and then I stamp out or punch out the flower petals that way and then make sure that everything goes onto my foam rolling board so that I could stretch them out a bit with my rolling ball tool. Now for a petal as small as this I'm going to go ahead and use 
a 28 gauge white wire, dip it in some glue, run it through that thick center that we made earlier and then pinch it. Now to roll these out, I don't want them to be round. I want them to be more long, not so much the traditional teardrop rose shape. I want them to be a little longer more than anything else. So gently with the large end of my rolling ball tool, that's what I'm doing is sort of tugging it out to get it a bit longer and then thinning it as much as I can towards the edges, leaving the center a little stronger so that it can support the rest of the petal. I do the same thing for both the wired and unwired. And then I'll go ahead and vein them. Now in order to vein them, I'm just using a simple little rose veiner and I actually ended up cutting the slit out so that the wire could fit through and I didn't damage anything on my flower petal. You just pop them in, give it a nice little press and then pull them out. Don't forget to cornstarch first in case your area is warm and the plate paste is a little bit sticky. I do the same for both. If it's not wired, then I just make sure it doesn't go into that slit that I cut so that I don't accidentally cut the petal itself when I'm stamping it. Once everything is out and veined, then using the small end of my rolling ball tool, I go ahead with the rolling ball tool, half on the petal, half off, and I just give it a roll so that it has some ruffle to it. It has more movement. And the smaller your rolling ball tool, the more movement and ruffle that you will get on the end of your petal. Going over it once is enough for me. I just want more movement than anything else. And then I go ahead and on a wavy foam drying board, Place them all so that they each have different movements until I'm ready to place them on. Now when the petals still have some movement but are dry to the touch, that is when I go ahead and color dust them. You don't have to do this extra step, but I enjoy it. Because I'm using a very light pink petal, what I'm going to do is a slightly darker pink for the center. And I'm just going to start at the base and drag it up a bit. And I'll do this for the front and back of each of the petals. Now once I'm done dusting, I get them ready to be put on to my carrier wire with my center. For the wired petals, I go ahead and gently bend them back and then using some floral tape, I attach it to the carrier wire, keeping it at the very base. And then one by one, I wrap my flower petals around. My first layer of petals is about five and then I add petals underneath that going in between the top two petals so that everything is overlapping and not on top of each other if that makes sense. If I'm going to glue it then all I do is glue the tip of the petal where the darkest pink part is and I attach that to the bottom of the base. So here you'll see what I'm saying when I say overlap them, not layer them. You want them in between the top two petals so that every petal is seen. You go ahead and you continue this overlapping process until you're all done with petals or you're happy with how full your flower looks. The petals are super light, so it dries pretty quickly as well. That's really nice. And then I don't show the process for the calyx here, but I just stamp out a regular calyx that you would see anywhere else. It's a five point star and I pop it right on.
And that is it. Here go a few that I made earlier. I think they're so pretty. They're so light and they're fairly simple to make once you get the hang of it. So I hope you guys get to give this a try as well. All right guys, that's it. Here they go again. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you found this tutorial helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. I would super appreciate that. And as always, if you have any questions or suggestions for the next videos, please do drop them down below. I'd love to hear from you. If not, I will see you guys for the next tutorial.